Black and from Bilal Amin. Uh, tonight's subject is a return to Oakland. We call it a return to Oakland because um, we left Oakland almost a year ago. It was uh, at the end of uh, uh, December last year. And we meant to be here about two weeks. I was actually going to just come and bring my daughter to uh, uh, pick her up up at uh, school in Boston and bring her home back home. And then this kind of little ritual we have, you know, where you drop them off and pick them up. It's, it's a little right. family ritual that we have. So I said, well, okay. I'll use it as a nice trip to interrupt. Uh, I had a court date on uh, January the 6th, so I was going to be back uh, probably around the uh, 1st or the 2nd or something like that. So, in the meantime, uh, on January the 3rd, it was an assassination by uh, Soleimani. Soleimani is a great personality in the Islamic movement. Uh, he's a major general. Uh, he, uh, he was the most instrumental person in anti-Daesh, anti-ISIS, in breaking up the control of uh, or the Saudi movement to disturb the Islamic movement, to use up all of its energy right. in fighting each other. Qasem Soleimani had done such a good job in Syria, and throughout the Middle East, the Saudis would we'll just say someone invited him to come to Iraq to play a role in mediation. So one of the other very important people was Aga Muhammad. He had a big role, and these two personalities had a big role in fighting against Saudi oppression. Now we had been talking about the great role that we had talked about Najaf and Karbala, especially for a few years, and that it had a special meaning. But the people participating in it didn't have a real clear idea what was going on. When this happened, the aftermath, the millions of people in Tehran, millions of people uh, coming out. The Iraqi flag, the Iranian flag over the two bodies. At Najaf and Karbala itself, this is the first place those two martyrs were taken. And it, as if the great unification, the most hated thing in that part of the world was the unification of Iraq and Iran. And this produced it in Spain. Of course, they've been working together all the time. The U.S. Uh, went there to cause trouble in 2003 and in 1991 and they failed totally in their whole attempt. But for us, we said, uh, this is what it's meant. This means the unification of the Muslims. This also means that everything that those great personalities was working toward, this, their martyrdom placed them in a position to receive it. It's like their martyrdom was a gift to humanity, and that the gift from Allah was everything they've been working for. That's what it was. 
So this happened on the third, so I stayed and then stayed and then explained this to people. Then uh, the virus come through and uh, other things, so it kept extending on, on, and on, and on. And now uh, we'll be returning to Oakland, but it's not a, just it happens. I could have returned quite a while ago, but I got a call yesterday from an old friend of mine, which I get a call from time to time. And I'd asked him before, how was the air quality there, and how was this, and how was that? And the last time he called, he said, man, the smoke is unbelievable, unbearable, and the air quality, da, 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 and the fires are still burning. So I said, okay. Yesterday the call, he said, well, we're expecting it's a lot of wind. He said, and we expect rain within the next few days. I said, good. Then I'm, I'm heading back. I wasn't going back there to breathe all that, uh, you know. When you're young, you can suck in all that stuff. But if you mature, who wants to breathe in all of that for no reason, you know? And then the rain is coming, that means in California, that means the wet season is starting, and so the land will turn green again. Yeah, in California, here it's turning dry. When you drive from here, when you go all the way to Nevada, and you go over the mountains into the Sacramento Valley in California, from here, for 3,000 miles, 2,000 something miles, 900 miles, 2,800 miles. Going that way, it's all gray and brown and ugly. But when you hit that Sacramento Valley, it turns green. All of it, because the weather is different then. Right. They have two seasons a wet season and a dry season. The wet season, California is green all throughout December, January, February, March, April, May starts browning. June is brown. July is big fire season. So I'm getting like a migratory bird, I guess, on this flying <laughs> <laughs> choose the good weather. I, said, I don't like that weather. No, come in. <laughs> when it uh, when it gets a certain way, uh, back in California, I'll come out here and enjoy this weather. But anyway, so I'm headed to California. But this is also uh, the 50th anniversary. Well, technically, it's the 49th anniversary. On January the first. 1972, uh, I was in Europe. I left here in 1971 from all the cases I, all the things that was going on in the U.S., the days of the, uh, the Great Oakland Experiment was ended. The Black Economic Enterprise Zone, the government had uh, moved in and it was looking pretty, uh, it was still on the road, but I wasn't the one motivating it at that time. <laughs> so, uh, I have something that says that I always evolved at the right time. So, it's a reason that we're here now. Of course, the main reason, 99.8% is that Allah want us here. Yeah. And then the little itsy bitsy piece that he give you to manage your own affairs, your own paradise, or your own, that you get a little corner. That's right. That, yeah, Allah don't make you do nothing, but that little part that where you make the decision, which is just a little pinch. Well, Every time something came up, I wrote right here, I evolved 
to power slowly, but I evolved at the proper time. When I, this January uh, 1st, 1972, I went, I was in Germany at that time. I came from East Africa. I had, I had been on a nice trip, you know, just looking. I've been in Algeria. And I had did a research, a nice several months research period. I had also helped the movement as much as I could in resources. So now, uh, I said that I'm making a comeback. <laughs> That's the way you think it's talk. You say, yeah, I'm making a comeback. So I said, the day I'm going to do it, and I bought my ticket from uh, Denmark, stopped over in France, and then on to here. Well, on to over here. I was shocked a little because uh, the flight was supposed to go <laughs> to Mexico City from Paris, France. Well, actually, I was listening on the thing, and they said, well, now we're going to land in Houston. I said, oh, because, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I, but it was transit. They weren't going to check passport. They weren't going to do anything. Right. But it was quite experience. I, experience. I said, man, I'm landing in the United States where I said I didn't want to be. But I just, I looked at the, I looked at the map, but you know, remember the world map is flat that you have, it's not a globe. So when I drew a line from Paris uh, to uh, Mexico City, it went right across the Caribbean and straight into Mexico City. But they fly, the earth is not round, it's like a pear. Right. So it's shorter. Like you see people come in, some face that way mm -hmm. for prayer, some face this way. Okay. That way is the shortest. Mm -hmm. That's the way they fly. They fly over the top of the earth, mm -hmm. over the Arctic, and all of that. They fly up over that, and then they fly down. Mm -hmm. That's shorter than flying around. Because remember, at the top is smaller, and at the bottom is bigger. Okay. Remember, yeah. the earth is not round. Yeah. I, I it's more that. like a pear. Yeah, yeah. Not a real pear, like, you know, it's just a little piece of it. Yeah. But kind of like that. It's kind of oblong. That's right. Yeah. It's, so anyway, so if you fly, a lot of times they just fly over the top, which mm -hmm. is shorter, right. and fly right down. So that's... Now, me and Dummy, I'm thinking the world is round, so I just draw a, a line. Uh -huh. Or take the ruler, I said, oh, Paris to Mexico City. And I just go, I said, oh, good. We'll fly over this, we'll fly over that, we'll fly over that. And we flew right over the top. So I was looking down and said, man, this is, looks like snow is freezing down there. And anyway, but then we went on to Mexico City. That was a big difference. When I came back on this side, I had nothing but a little bag, a little handbag. When I left, I must have had 10 pair of shoes, 20 or 30 suits. I had boxes of meek hats and clothes. I mean, you know. But I studied something. When I came back, when you're making a comeback, you stripped down. I'm telling you that since then, I've lived like I live now. I, I, before I, when I left, I had all that material. When I came back on this side, I didn't have nothing but a handbag. That's all I had. And I left, a, I left all those European clothes in Europe. I left everything in Europe where it belonged. The stuff that I had here is European. 
so I left it. I've never regretted it, including the way we sleep and everywhere, all that is the same as in South America. That uh, when you get mission orientated, you don't fluff yourself up with uh, all of this so-called comforts, you know what I mean? Unnecessary comforts. Right. So, anyway, I came back on this side with the idea of making a comeback. And that's exactly what I did. I made a comeback. Uh, I met a friend in, in uh, Mexico City. We went up to a certain place, did a certain thing. And, uh, he came on back to California, and I came on over the other side, did a little something, and uh, went on down to South America. And after going to Peru and, you know, just enjoying, uh, it was a little strange because, see, everything you're doing now is different than what you but you, you know, your, your whole environment is different. Right. You're not in the United States anymore, you're in other parts of the world. And they speak different languages, the weighing system is different, the measurements is different, they use kilometers and not miles, and uh, they use all kind of new stuff, and you have to get used to that, including the language. So, long story short, I went down to South America and I went around till I hit the spot of what was good. And it was a comeback. It was strange because everybody was saying, well, Big Hank left and Big Hank is like everybody else. We won't hear of him no more. He's gone, you know. He'll probably get uh, caught over somewhere by Interpol and, uh, you know, brought back to the U.S. and brought in prison. That was what people thought. Some people made long tapes about, uh, believe it or not, about the influence that had happened. That was all such a shock that happened to everybody while we was there in Oakland during those last five, six years from 1966 to 1971 was a long time. Right now, it ain't nothing. Five years, and it's, it's not nothing. You can see some of the things I got, some of the notes right here is from, uh, what does it say right there? 5406. Yeah. Shit, that's 14 years ago. That's 14 years ago. To me, those are just notes from that time. And, uh, but in those days, five years, well, plus you're younger. And so five years, like, you know, from the time you're 10 years old to the time you're 15, is a big jump. You look different, you sound different, right? It's a big deal. And the same thing with from uh, late teens up into the 20s. But anyway, that's why I like that saying uh, from uh, one of the brothers, a setback ain't nothing but a setup for a comeback. And, and in those days we were, Muhammad Ali, 71, had just made a comeback. Uh, many of the great fighters made little comebacks. The game produced People would go down and then they would try to come back and a few would make it, but most wouldn't. So we was used to the idea of comebacks. Would you push the, uh, the, the just a little, push it up just a little, a uh, little bit of heat to kick on. Yeah, the one on the right. There you go. There you go. Okay. So anyway, 
When we go back to Oakland, this is a comeback for us. Now, but it's more than a comeback. It is the culmination of a whole great period because before we didn't have that much control over our environment. This time, when we go back to Oakland, we're going back to an environment that we manipulated. We developed that environment in Oakland. It didn't just happen. Okay, if you look at everything, okay, most of the people will look at this and say, oh, that's terrible. That's not terrible. That's good. When I would, when I would be in Oakland, I would talk to Brother Tufel almost every night. And I would talk to him about the spiritual development and all of that stuff because those encounters were causing rapid development. Remember, if you get in a game that's, that's accelerating very quickly, you got to accelerate with the game. And so if you put yourself in a game, everybody in the game may not be accelerated, but you have to because the pressure is on you. See, the people put the pressure on you, they may not develop at all. But the pressure that they put on you, you have to develop. What was the main development here? This is an unjustified attack on an innocent man who have done nothing to nobody. But the direction and the order that comes out of this is the direction and order that we practice. And we had to go through it to be an example to show people. Number one, never fight anyone but the one that you're supposed to fight. We're dealing with the system. We don't deal with pawns that they throw out. Right? The people, you can see them, they, they, they're, they're pawns. Yeah. It would be insanity. What happens? Does everybody do that? Yes, everybody does that. All the Negroes, if you bring gang member X, gang member Y, and they get to messing with you, you're going to respond to them directly, not the system that sent them. That's why we don't get nowhere. We don't get nowhere. That was the thing that had to happen. That was one of the main things that had to happen. 